regret the words you say. You know, like, as soon as you open your mouth, you have that realization that you definitely should not have picked that word. Um, I, I can guarantee if you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I think this is something that all of us are familiar with. Because words are a funny thing. Words are beautiful and powerful. Uh, they can move us, change us, shape us uh, as people. I mean, think about art. You have the lyrics to songs, poetry, the written and spoken word. Even in visual art, uh, some of my favorite visual art is those word art where they take a, a couple of words that mean something and do them in beautiful fonts and arrange them in, in beautiful ways. It's, words are just a, a, an amazing thing. They're powerful, powerful things. Which is why the words we choose to use or not use matters like a lot. Um, why are words so powerful? I mean, we can look at what psychology says about how the words we speak and the words spoken to us, especially in our childhood, will shape us and change the way we look at ourselves and the world around us. But human wisdom is only going to get us so far. I would rather this morning, if we looked at the most powerful words ever spoken, the words of the creator of life himself, breathed out through the authors of scripture. So what does scripture say about the power of words and the importance of choosing our words wisely? Well, let's start off with a, just a handful of wise sayings from the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom meant to direct our day-to-day -day life. In Proverbs 18.21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 12.18, There is one who speaks rashly like a piercing sword. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 15.4 says that the tongue that heals is a tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. And of course, this classic piece of advice from Proverbs 13.3, the one who guards his mouth protects his life. The one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. Words matter. Proverbs says that our words can bring healing or hurt greatly. Um, the words we choose to speak have a power. But what exactly is this power that words have? How do they affect us and the people around us? And more importantly, if it's so important to choose our words wisely, how, how do we do that? So let's flip to today's main passage, James chapter 3. Starting at verse 2, James writes, For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's mature, able also to control the whole body. Now, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we direct their whole bodies. And consider ships, though very large and driven by fierce winds, they're guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So too, though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts great things. Consider how a small fire sets ablaze a large forest. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It stains the whole body and sets the course of life on fire. And it is itself set on fire by hell. Jeez, James, tell us how you really feel about words, eh? He continues, Every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and fish is tamed and has been tamed by humankind, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? James is telling us that the words we speak matter so much because our words actually shape the direction we move in. Our words set our course like the rudder of a ship. Um, the words we speak shape us. Your words shape you. The words you choose to say will actually affect the, the, your development, the way that you perceive your life, um, who you are, the world around you. They'll even shape your faith and your character. That's why it's so important we choose our words wisely. But our words don't just affect us. Proverbs tells us that they bring healing or hurting. They can offer life or death to others. Your words shape 
others. The words you choose to speak to those around you can bring healing and life to them, or they can greatly wound them. It's why our words are so important. So, these powerful words that James talks about, he calls them blessing or cursing. And in Proverbs, he talks about words that bring life and, and words that bring death. So, what are these kinds of words? Let's look at words of death first. See, words of death are lies. You, it, Proverbs says that a, de- a de- deceiving, devious tongue is what brings death. Right? When we speak lies, whether those are flattering lies to win us favor or lies to shield us from harm uh, or lies just to manipulate those around us or even lies intentionally meant to hurt, uh, words of death are lies. And they may be born in the human heart, but they get their power from somewhere else. Because words of death, they come from Satan, the one that Jesus calls the father of lies. The enemy whose mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. And often when we speak a word of death, whether intentionally or not, what we're doing is we're actually just echoing what, um, what, what the hearer's inner critic is already saying. You know that voice inside that, that, that tells you you're no good? That voice that is empowered by the enemy. Speaking things like, you have no value. You're just a mess up. And then here we come along with our words of death and our frustration, and we repeat the same thing the enemy's been telling this person day in and day out. See, I bet when I said words of death, you thought, oh, I don't speak words of death, or at least not often. But if I told you that gossip, that insults, that discouragement, that these things are words of death, does that change your answer? Because words of death are words that tear down. Words of death tear down a person. They, they, they make them feel smaller. They, they, they steal life and joy from them. They, they try and tear them apart. Why words of death are, are so terrible. And why scripture warns us constantly about not speaking these things. I mean, just in Romans 1, Paul says, they're filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, wickedness. They're full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit. And malice, they're gossips and slanderers. Gossip and murder on the same list. And Jesus clears this up to make sure we don't think it's an accident. Because in Matthew 5, Jesus said, You've heard it said, do not murder. Whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, whoever is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Whoever insults his brother or sister will be subject to the court. Whoever says, you fool, will be subject to hellfire. Hurting people, tearing people down with our words... That's speaking a word of death. So let's ask the hard question. When was the last time you spoke a word of death? But enough on uh, on that. Let's look at words of life. The words that Proverbs says can bring healing. Um, What are those? Well, words of life are truth. For something to be a word that brings life, it has to be true. See, you can never bring life to someone with a lie. Even a comforting lie. The best that a comforting lie can do is bring uh, an an illusion, a false version of life. Um, Some of us need to hear this. That a lie spoken sweetly is still a word of death. For us to bring life with our words, we have to speak truth. But there are some of you who, like me, don't have a problem. Um, we're not the comfort with a lie kind of people, right? You'd much rather offend with the truth, but did you know that a truth spoken harshly is still a word of death? Because when you wield the truth like a weapon to tear someone down, the fruit shows it's a word that brings death. So maybe we need to think about this the next time you have to correct someone. To check your motivation? Are you doing this because you genuinely love them? Because you want to build them up and see, bring life to them, see blessing come in their life? 
Or are you correcting them because you delight in how good it makes you feel to point out their error? So words of life are truth, never lies. And just like words of death get their power from somewhere else, words of life get their power from God. Words of life come from God. In the same way, we can use our words to agree with what the enemy says. We can use our words to agree with what God says. In fact, the most powerful words you will ever speak are words that agree with the truth that God has revealed. And God has revealed so much truth about himself, about who we are as his people, about um, the promises that he makes to us in scripture. So the most powerful words of life you can speak are words that agree with scripture. This doesn't mean going around quoting Bible verses at people, because let's face it, that is kind of weird in everyday conversation. What this means is speaking in such a way that that your words agree with the truth of Scripture and bring it into your life and the lives of those around you. Um, So what exactly does that look like then? Right? How how what is a word of life gonna look like when we speak it? Well, it's a good thing Paul tells us in pretty much every one of his letters. Uh, Here's a few places. 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul says, Therefore, encourage one another. Build each other up as you're already doing. And again, in Ephesians 4.29, No foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need, so that it gives grace to those who hear. A word of life builds up. Words of life build up those that you're speaking to, whether that's yourself or those around you. A word of life is meant to build someone up, encourage them, and point them forward to the person God is making them to be, to partner with what God is already doing in their life by speaking words that remind them of that and affirm God's work. A word of life looks like encouragement. Um, in, in fact, there, there's, uh, there's this guy in the Bible. You probably don't know him by his name, but I can guarantee you've heard of him in, in the book of Acts um, by his nickname, Barnabas. It actually means son of encouragement. But everyone just called him by this nickname because he was so good at speaking words of life. Now, to be fair, though, Barnabas had something called the gift of encouragement. This is a supernatural gift the Holy Spirit gives that makes you exceptionally good at speaking words of encouragement. We all know people like this. For me, it's uh, one of my best friends, Austin, a guy in my community group. He speaks words of life all the time. And it's like the, the Holy Spirit gives him this kind of nudge so he knows exactly what to say to who exactly when it's needed. Um, So people like Barnabas and Austin, they're really good at this because they have the the gift of encouragement. So they're supernaturally good. But notice that Paul doesn't say, hey, if you have the gift of encouragement, encourage one another. No, it's something he's teaching that all Jesus followers are called to do is to encourage each other and build each other up with our words, whether we have the gift or not. So let's get super practical. How do we do that? How do we speak words of life to the people around us? Well, a word of life is God's life-giving truth spoken into the present moment. This means that it's going to look slightly different depending on the moment you're speaking into. Um, But for a friend who is um, feeling brokenhearted, going through loss, it might look like a reminder that, that they're loved, that you're with them, that God sees their pain, that God is near to the brokenhearted. To the friend who's going through lots of heavy things, just trial after trial in their life, it might be a note um, reminding them that the promises that God makes, reminding them that they're not alone in this, that you're praying for them, that you're cheering for them, that God is walking through this with them. For a family member who doesn't see the value in their own life, it could be words that reaffirm the value they have, reminders that God values them, reminding them the purpose that they have, the, the, the gifts and callings you see in their life. Um, for a friend who's, who's struggling with guilt, Condemnation, unforgiveness could be a word that brings grace and healing into their life. And for a friend who's caught up in sin, it could be a correction delivered with gentleness, 
and love, to build them up and point them to the better way of King Jesus. But see, the, the, the thing that all of these have in common is their motivation is love. A word of life is truth delivered in love with the goal of building up the hearer. The motivation always has to be genuine love. And that's hard, because let me tell you, when someone's frustrating me, I don't find it easy to love them. So how am I going to choose to speak life to them? Well, James helps us out with that. He says that the reason it's so wrong that we curse, that we speak words of death over people is because everyone is made in God's image. Every time you speak to someone, you are speaking to someone, speaking words of life or words of death to someone who is made in the image and likeness of God, to someone that God designed to be like him. Yes, maybe they're broken and maybe they're frustrating you and maybe their sin is is making them very not like God, but they are made in God's image. They are worthy of love. They are deserving of having these words of life and encouragement spoken to them. Because truth is, everyone you speak to is one of two things. They're either your brother or sister in the family of Jesus. Someone that you have been called to encourage and build up. Or there's someone far from Jesus. Someone that Jesus loves so much he died for them and then calls you to reveal his love and goodness to and invite them to follow him. So how could we speak words of death over these people? That's why it's so important that we choose to speak life. Now, as we begin to wind down this morning, I, I, I want to circle back to the beginning of James 3. I intentionally skipped over verse 1 so we could come back to it, because I don't think it's an accident that James starts this passage like this. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. Teachers, really, I think all those in authority Your words matter more because your words carry more power. I mean, a lie is damaging no matter what, but a lie is never more damaging than when it's taught as truth from someone who's a teacher. And gossip is poison, but it is at its most venomous when it's the manager, the leader, the supervisor who's participating. And a word of discouragement can do long lasting damage especially when it's spoken from a parent to a child. But this means that the flip side is also true. That for you who are in authority, teachers, leaders, supervisors, managers, employees, especially parents, your words of life carry more power. Um, The words of life you speak have greater impact. Now, um, I want to I pause for a second and speak to you parents, because I know, I, I, I've been there, I feel it. That as soon as I started saying that, you got that twinge of condemnation, the reminder of all the words of death that have slipped out in moments of frustration. So let me give you this word of life. God can do so much more with the words of life you choose to speak over your kids than the enemy can with the words of death that slip out in your frustration. God can do so much more when you use your words to partner with what he is already doing in your kid's life. So trust that the God who loves your kids, who made them and who entrusted them to you is working in their life and will use the words of life you speak to, to, to bring to completion the good work that he's begun in them. And also trust that even if you come from a, a pattern of words of death, If your home was full of words of death as a child, you can break that because you have the spirit of the living God living inside of you, ready to bring you words of life to speak to your children. Trust that he is more powerful than any history, than any words of death. I just want to encourage you parents with that because I know this struggle. Um, So as as we wind down this morning, I want to remind us Your words are powerful. So choose to speak life. The last thing I want is for us to leave here feeling inspired and do nothing with it. Because this is literally one of the easiest messages you could hear to apply to your life. 
So I want you to do two things this week. First, I want you to ask those closest to you what words of death you speak. Ask your spouse, your kids, your friends, your family. Do, do you gossip? Um, does discouragement come from your mouth easy? Uh, or if you're like me, do sarcastic, rude insults come out because you value the, the, the funny more than the feelings? Ask, and then do something about it. Intentionally work to not speak those words of death, but to do more than that. Intentionally speak life. This week, every day this week, find someone to speak life to, whether that is an encouraging truth delivered to your kids in the morning, or a word of grace to your spouse who's struggling, or a note uh, rem with encouraging words and reminders of God's promises to a friend, to a coworker, to a neighbor. Find someone every day this week and speak words of life intentionally. Here's the beautiful thing about all this though is that at the end of the day, we don't have to fabricate these words of life. We don't have to find it within ourselves to make these things come out. Because Jesus says in Matthew 12, that the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. And for us who follow Jesus, um, we have the spirit of the living God speaking words of life into our very being. As he, he transforms us to become more like Jesus through his word, through the power of his spirit. So the more time we spend with Jesus, following Jesus, the more these words of life will naturally be what comes out. No, but for some of us, for some of you listening right now, words of death are what come out of you all the time, no matter how hard you try, because you don't have Jesus in your life. Because from the overflow of your heart, which is corrupted by sin, Words of death are all that can come out. Because see, sin is the reason that we speak death over each other. Sin is that selfish thing that corrupts us, that, that, that makes us walk away from what God has for us and live like we're our own God. And it leads to us selfishly hurting ourselves and those around us. And it breaks our relationship with God. But Jesus came and died on the cross so that, that this sin could be put to death so that everyone who trusts in Jesus could actually have that sin removed from them and be made friends with God again. And then Jesus even rose again from the dead to bring brand new life to everyone who trusts in him. So that when you trust Jesus and follow Jesus, you have brand new life with God's own spirit coming to live inside of you. And he, as your friend, will lead you and guide you and transform you so that words of life flow out of you who replace the death and corruption inside of you with life-giving words as He brings life to you, new, brand new life with God. And if you want that, like there's good news here. It's a free gift. There's nothing you have to do. Um, you can't even stop. If you find that words of death just pour out of you naturally, you're, you're always speaking negative, bringing yourself and others down. You don't have to put in all this effort and train yourself to speak words of life. No, first, you need Jesus to come in and he'll make you brand new from the inside so that words of life become the thing that comes out of you. And if you want to receive that, all you have to do is tell God, trust that Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for you because he loves you, that he is king, that he is God. Trust him and follow him. If you want to do that today, I'd encourage you to just pray this prayer with me. Father, Thank you so much for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to get rid of my sin. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. Thank you for Jesus' resurrection that brings me brand new life. Thank you for your spirit that comes to live inside me, to transform me, to lead me, to guide me, to be my friend, to bring life to me and empower me to choose life, not death. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to celebrate that with you. So I'd encourage you to click the button that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. Let us know so that we can celebrate with you and offer you some next steps to help you in this relationship with Jesus. Now, before all of you sign off, um, 
I said earlier that there's a lot of different ways to speak words of life. And one of them that we, we don't do as often in the modern church, um, that was a thing in the more traditional churches through history, and, and even something that the Apostle Paul ended most of his letters with, called a benediction or, or a blessing, uh, where the, the pastor would, would speak words of life f- taken right from Scripture, or echoing the words of Scripture over the, the, the people of Jesus who'd gathered to, to celebrate together. And right now, I feel like the Holy Spirit would just like to speak some life to you right now. So I'd encourage you, um, just as we close, to hold your hands out and close your eyes. Put yourself in a, in a position where you're ready to receive these words of life that God wants to speak into you. All of these words are just echoes from Scripture that I feel the Spirit wants to, to, to put into your heart right now. So open your heart. And, and receive this blessing. Father, I, I do ask that you would just help these hearts to be open, to receive these words of life. You are the beloved one of Jesus. You are the child of the everlasting God. You are a temple of the living God. You've been redeemed and made new. You have been filled with life that flows like living water. May it flow from you. May you experience the peace that passes all understanding. May you know the fullness of the joy that Jesus brings. And may you be fully aware of the love that God has for you. The love that is too wide. Too, too high, too deep to even measure. May you know that in all things you are victorious through Jesus who loves you and gives you strength. That nothing can separate you from that great love he has for you. And filled with that knowledge, may you go and speak life the life that's welling up inside of you. Holy Spirit, make these words real in the hearts of all those listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, your words have power. So choose to speak life this week. And as always, Live a life that celebrates God.